Outside of science, my newest hobby is skating. It gives me the opportunity to take a break from thinking about my brain. My passion for neuroscience started in seventh grade. My dad gave me a word puzzle that made you reconstruct language. And I've been asking questions about the brain ever since. All dad's fault. <laughs> As a neuroscientist, I study how one part of the brain, the cerebellum, operates differently in children with disorders like ADHD and dyslexia. The cerebellum has three times as many neurons as the entire rest of the brain, but it's been overlooked. We don't fully understand yet how it's involved with higher cognitive functions like working memory, attention, and even emotions. All right, so for this next part, we're just gonna take a more detailed picture of your brain. One of the things that I love most is honestly sharing the MRI experience and especially for kids, letting them get a peek inside their brain. We scan kids both with and without ADHD to compare and see how their brains might behave differently. Neurodevelopmental disorders like ADHD and dyslexia are lifelong disorders. They're usually diagnosed in childhood but persist all throughout life. Knowing how to improve treatments can lead to improving quality of life. And then the last structure. I love sharing neuroscience and my passion for science with others. Brainstem really does sit like tucked in here. So. Teaching for me is a form of mentorship for the students, but also a way to be a visible African American woman in science. It's a way to kind of affirm that you are capable. It's an example to lead by. So I hope to be that for young women of color. Navigating a career in STEM can be difficult simply because sometimes you can feel like you haven't done enough or you don't know enough. I would like to portray that you can take up space, that you should take up space, that it's okay to chase your curiosities and that women can do science and do science well.